Welcome to the Tug of Heart Podcast on Strong Island Radio. This is the place where we dig deep into the heart to rise in love. So let's join good friends Lori and Marianne as they discuss understanding and living from the heart. Hello and welcome to Tug of Heart. This is Lori. I'm here with the incredible, spontaneous <laughs> Mary oh, Ann. <laughs> when I, I was just telling oh, you that Lori. about being spontaneous, this is so your neck of the woods. That's all I could say about this. Today we're talking about being spontaneous mm. uh, in a very personal inner way and what that can lead to. How are you doing, Marianne? Pretty good. I love it. I do. Um, and actually, we were just laughing about it because we were like, I felt like we didn't have to do any homework. No, you know, even more so important not to do right. homework. I have jotted a couple true. thoughts. Not even, I drew a, a weird bullseye, showed you, and I was like, could we do this? Yeah, <laughs> and here no, we are. It's very truth. Truth um, about spontaneity. I saw this thing this morning on Facebook from one of my friends, and this it, it just kind of hit what I was talking on. One of the reasons I wanted to talk about uh, spontaneity is because I was like, something has to kind of shake things up a little bit because mm -hmm. the heaviness, right? Yes. yes. So much happening, yes. so much being put right in our face, mm -hmm. what we need to see, and what more than that, what we need to feel, how we should feel about things. It's overwhelming. Yes. It's a lot. So incidentally, this morning, I saw on, on Facebook, a friend had posted this thing where um, they had done a probably a survey, I'm guessing, at the beginning of the end of 2019. And 8.2% of people in our country said they were experiencing anxiety. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Okay. Well, just this year at the beginning, 42% are reporting like a high level of anxiety also makes sense so so that to me anxiety is you've stress 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 this doesn't count all the really stressed out people mm -hmm. it doesn't count the people who have re uh, passed stress and gone into a little distressed moments mm -hmm. but now it's this kind of underlying anxiety and when i was thinking about it and what kind of led to today i was like well Part of that is a, kind of obvious, the, everything that's going on right now. But if you look at the beginning of the year, we've lost th a lot of spontaneity in, in our actions and what we can do mm -hmm. um, by being housebound, by being Limiting isolated. Limiting choices. Right. Sure. So what do you think about that and how it has affected people like tremendous right well and i think that it it's interesting because anxiety and excitement kind of run the same path you're right yep and i i think that spontaneity if we define it as a new and appropriate oh, response to a known situation or a familiar situation or a repetitive kind of situation, then you start to veer into excitement because it's a new script. It's a, it's a new response. But back to us yeah. having limited choices and anxiety being on the rise, a big piece of that, I think, is we are stuck in this. We are trapped in this role and these limits and within that sometimes really limiting our choices and what we can do can allow for spontaneity to break through and I think we saw some moments of that in the beginning right people yeah. started to get familiar with zoom or start baking their breads or tending to their gardens, making a new choice, a choice that they hadn't made before and feeling excited about it. What becomes difficult is sustaining that kind of spirit. The of, spirit. Of I love spontaneity. That. 
because it kind of is like a sparkler that you light it and it's exciting and you're there and then it burns out. So how do we sustain and it, um, and how do we make the choice? I think what we're talking about, right? A new and appropriate response to an old situation, but a new and heart-centered response to a familiar situation. And that goes with everything we have spoken about for the last nine months, what a heart-centered response is, a spontaneous heart-centered response versus a mind-centered. Right. actually, I think that's where sustainability lives. Absolutely. You agree? I I totally agree. I'm I'm sitting here trying to take in what you're saying because it's 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 spot on it's it's so right what you're saying about the um, like at, at first it's almost having this kind of energy let me go back to when you began when you were saying anxiety and excitement kind of run the same let's say channels in our body right? yes. the same yes. the same uh, system can mm-hmm. f- for both at least and that's one of the things <clears throat> we can do I think like early on with COVID I saw I I felt as if I saw I can't say because I had my own feelings so I don't this is not a completely objective look but a lot of people just tense anxious anxious yes arguing argumentative fighting I love a good argument but not the fighting Mm -hmm. okay and I remember thinking at the time some of the things that people were really taking to extremes maybe need not. Some, yes, 100%. Mm-hmm. But some, they people kind of seemed like they were going to extremes for the sake of going to extremes. And one of the little mini theories I had at the time was people may be doing this, like being very aggressive in certain ways because that's the closest to feeling alive we get right now. Mm-hmm. It's got that same. We don't have excitement. Something to stand for. Yeah, it's the fight for. It, it's that. It's like running the same course through your body of excitement. Yes. But it's really. Um, it's fueled. Angst. Yes, yeah, because it's fueled by. If we're looking at that nervous system, it is right. fueled by survival energy. Right, our lives were on the line. There was this unknown danger threat to our very existence. So that at the base is going to then fuel this sort of passion, um, but it's fueling it from a fight or flight place, right? Versus a more visionary, creative place, and where we're looking to move, like the course is towards s- that. Ex- exactly because space. some of it initially I actually kind of dig mm-hmm. you know and then at, at, I don't know if it's my age where I'm like all right young people go for it but mm-hmm. then the second part of me my nature is like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. okay whoa whoa, whoa. let's a, not a, take it too far a little right. you got attention now show them what to do show, right. you know it, this is just my big overview and my mm-hmm. you know and I don't think you're you're different from many many of us right that initial fire it's that same type there's of a beauty f- to it yes it is that sparkle and then okay but it's Let in the, the same way settle. as what we're talking about with the spontaneity of of even people rising to be heard it's um it's a it's a it's a good act but it it's not a the permanent act you want it's that ignition mm-hmm. and kind of the push into something new but then there's that again sustaining what you initially said was good the bottom line is to sustain good and uh you had spoke last time about the monster so you have to say uh, things that can grow in you can feel very big and mm-hmm. it, and and you feel stronger and safer somehow but what you and, and you want to kind of disrupt things so spontaneity can do that and that spark can do it that uh, I love the word disruption because I think that that is at the heart of it and that's Let's the purpose disrupt. but then once you do what do you do with it it's yeah. disrupted now 
now you bring uh, another form of uh, work in. And this is one of the things I think of, of you. Um, with Spark closing, I'm a little emotional when I think of this. I don't know why. I don't know why, Marianne, but um, because I always had thought at Spark how many people you could heal. And it, on top of all the other hurt, it hurt me so bad for people to lose that. Mm -hmm. That I, possibility. I, I had sworn up and down. I used to tell Rosalie, if I had younger ovaries, I would try for a dozen kids just to bring them in mm -hmm. to help the world. Like, this would be my contribution. But having had time without that reactivity that we're talking about, I look at it like in a very clinical way you were able to help so many, but the world had been shifting in the background in a, in a lot of ways that, um, you know, our own uh, center of the world uh, cap uh, like just tendencies kind of kept us from seeing, but now that we have a little bit uh, more of the picture of a lot of stuff that's happening at the same time, I see it like, you know what, this is exactly right because Marianne had this spark, spark, hmm. uh, that she tended to, and it was a calm clinical setting where at your pace, at children's pace, as you could, but now that's for like boo-boos and for guidance, and now I see it more like the world has quickly shifted to, to battle. And now we need medics on the field. You could not serve both. And in this way, I have reverence for that disruption mm -hmm. when I despised it. And that's one of those things kind of like where with time a little bit more is shown. Yeah, I think that's, that is the truth of it. And, um, and it takes I, spontaneous care. That is... It's, it's different. absolutely totally true. different. I think that when we talk about this disruption and what comes after, right? So the disruption is really a let's take a look. Like l this is our pause. This Blowing is our whistle. moment. Yeah, freeze. To shift up. You have the opportunity to do it a little differently, to speak differently on it, to make a choice that like can really just be very, very difficult. I, at least it's what I want to see with the world. I, I really long to see that the disruption is immediately followed by leadership of the heart, right? And we've talked so much about how the heart leads and the characteristics because to come in, to swoop in then afterwards with compassion and curiosity and confidence and um, so many of the qualities that we spoke about then allows for a deeper look, right? A, a, a more um, full, conscious, less in the play space. Right, because right. spontaneity, like, speaks to that play space, the the liminal space that we've talked a lot about, also. Right, and there's this very pure quality about what can, um, because there's spontaneous acts of aggression, there's spontaneous acts of of good and of not good, and so when we're talking about coming from the heart, it's really. Uh, by definition, first of all, because spon spontaneous, you know, we have its use in um, science mm -hmm. and, and, and misuse and a lot of things. So <clears throat> spontaneous can give this connotation of instantaneous also. Yes. And part of me does... And even a little like, recklessness right. it kind of gives, which it... it, it mm -hmm. I do liken it a little bit to that, except there's much more um, evenness to uh, something spontaneous because it comes from a pure place. And so to back up when I was saying about like the world now needing this like mobile hospital, and this is a different type of care, and it, and it needs to be like spontaneous decisions for treatment and acting on it, and that requires um, 
not checking with a world that's wounding itself and people within the world wounding one another to see how it's done. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you're spontaneous, by definition, it's the source of itself. So what I give to the world is sourced only in me. It's, it's nothing external. Now, this is important. I, I think I had joked with you this week where I was like, I'm in dreamland because, mm. b- like being on the spectrum, you talk about sh- a little decline or shortage in, um, in impulse control and things like that. You cannot confuse these two. Mm. Although one can be all right, too, properly used. They both can. But it's not because impulse control is more about a reaction to the world yes. that was not well thought out. Right. And yes. and when we're saying uh, thanks for – and tell me if I go wrong because I didn't no, even check these out. No, it's different. Mo- Impulsivity is different it, than yes. spontaneity. So spontaneity is only from within. So – the if it's an idea if it's a thought if it but mostly it's that verb you talk about in heart living in loving and it's this action rises from within so we're not saying somebody threw something at somebody and you're and then you look I'll stop this and you got your cue from the last person that let go of something in their hand Mm. and so your approach is to put an end to it with their means we're way past that. This is so messy. Not, it's no longer an option. That's why we're like, stop, pause. Mm-hmm. I, at this point, and it's not in my uh, necessarily judgment of the world, but it's in my judgment of myself in a sense where I don't trust myself to interpret what's going on in the world enough that I would want to copy or... Um, imitate any type of behavior I see and believe is right right now because the thing that the heart has that when you get to the mind and the body uh, you can lack is that context and everything we see the context runs at this point through legacies of groups of people it's so much nobody has enough life in them right now on earth to do the tracking, if that's our approach. Mm -hmm. But what we can say is, what I will do is offer something to the world that is a good in my intention, and I'm going to get it from within and bring this, because I don't know anymore. And Marianne, I say this in like almost begging sometimes, you were like, I can't tell who's right or wrong anymore. Mm-hmm. It's maddening. Well, right. If that's where you're going to stand, in, we're all a little wrong. We're all a little right, <laughs> right, as far as I'm concerned. And I think that's part of like the the spontaneous overturn of a system that's just yes. looking at right or wrong, and which side are you on? Are you on this side or that side? And if you're on this side, there's a series of patterns that we're expecting you to repeat. And behave, and there are certain scripts that you are to say because that keeps you belonging in that. And um, really, what we're talking about today is this work. And spontaneous heart does not come without doing the work that we've sort of laid out for the last nine months. And yes. like it's it mm-hmm. is daily practice of. Um, really listening to the mind, listening to the body, the physical body and the emotional body, and then really moving those two kind of forces through the heart and the wisdom of the heart. Right. And that, and then the purity of that expression, because it's, if it's from the heart, the one thing, you know, if it's from the heart, because hearts can be mistaken too, and mm-hmm. and and, but the, you know that it's unadulterated, and that it it's not with that heavy, heavy burden of influence of the world, because we all are to some degree shaped. There's just no way around it. No matter uh, where people think they're coming from, we all are to some degree products. Of, of exactly what we live and repeat every day. Yes. And what we see repeated that we're not part of, but the people that are repeating it just seem like they're 
getting along better. Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the things because, thank goodness, I'm this age. Well, this is happening because, I'm you know, it's a little easier to be like, Ugh, you know, when I was young, I'd be like, I don't, but I want to be included, you know. Well, and it's also, you know, it's this time factor of being older that you want to just cut to the heart of the matter, right? And that Literally. is surprising to people. It's like, what? Now, look, as a therapist, I was trained to let things unfold, right? Slowly unfold a year, as long as it takes. This goes Not back to the clinical for me. setting. <laughs> I am like, we're cutting to the heart of the matter. Can- now let's let's work here. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm seeing. Because why not? Like, why not? Why not just cut to it? Let's, it's let's this open bypassing. it up. bypassing. And Marianne, I want to ask you if you can remember this. I have always said some of the most tremendous work I've seen you do with humanity Mm -hmm. is in the must say goodbye. Mm. If you can take a moment, because this is one of the, and, and I feel like because you have a different sense of urgency and you've lost some inhibition in certain circumstances when, say, you've been working with somebody and it's time to part ways. And what advantage does that give you? And what can you say about how you can be spontaneous in a unique way then? And now this is kind of the norm, right? What you had been training for here and there. So what do you mean, So Maury? like if you're working with somebody. And it's time to end. It's time to, it's not, or there's, uh, they're not working with you. So you, what is left is to sit at the table with a heart and say, I have to say goodbye. And what can you include in that goodbye that is, is very special and spontaneous? Yeah, that's, that is. And uninhibited, right? Yeah. Because, they're, because they are going, you're going to, everything from your heart that you, that you would want to hold, you're going to try to send them off with it. Well, because it's not, it's not sitting in a position of power. Right. And making a decision that time's up for whatever reason it's no longer uh, it's no longer gonna be. Right. It, no. It's never ever that for me. It's it's more about releasing a certain way of being together and being trusting in that if I can be true to the recognition that, oh, all right, it, it is time to release what this is now, trust that it will grow into what it's supposed to grow, the relationship, the person, me, because it is just about that, honoring the, you know, the, the truth of the moment right. that arises and, and it's that like comes a, from mind body circumstance and it turns into this type of um like when your upperclassmen would be ready to move on mm-hmm. for example it it makes this moment or one of your teachers i remember you in an in in spontaneity uh, your goodbye. This is so. This is what I'm saying. Where it's it became um, almost ritualistic. Mm-hmm. So it's also an abbreviation of so much that you're able to do in a moment, and, and, and it's not able. It's that the power of that kind of finality feeling, even mm-hmm. though it's not forever after, but it's it's being able to have that creativity and that sense of something that you're like going right to your heart, going to get the words, bring it up. And I'm saying for everybody, right? Mm -hmm. When you're parting ways or when you need to just give somebody something before they walk out that door, even if they're coming back. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of more in the place where what we want to, to do with one another. And I see this more with my losses, with yours, with everybody's is, uh, where you begin to value, uniquely every moment that it could potentially be that. Mm -hmm. So you want to have that uh, attitude, that spirit. I'm going to say spirit 
because here's the other thing when we go to spontaneity and we'll be going into this next with happiness we come back to that intuition you know the tutelary the genius mm. special in a special way the feminine genius mm. or masculine genius but it's this last act of the sending off and just in a very uh, higher form we're able to capture so much that we mean and intend mm -hmm. and to express it in a very abbreviated way but spon spon being spontaneous in day to day life kind of is doing a little bit more of that mm. where mm. moments are more important and when we treat them like that you and I had spoke of the spontaneous ritual. We were, remember we used to be, huh, yes. we had this playful thing for a while, uh, for those of you listening, where we'd be like, why can't we have more spontaneous rituals? Right. This is a special moment. Here comes Marianne. I have a cherry in my hand. Let me break the cherry. Mm -hmm. I now have half, but I have this ritual. The, right. So much sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. And because you've, you've raised it by just, doing something spontaneous, and that's also the fun, the whimsy. Mm. What do you think about that part? Because you're a little looser about doing things like that. Well, it's... And it makes it fun. The awkward, painful shift can be at least captivating oh in a my positive gosh. way. It's, it just goes back to creating the sacredness, right? We talk about ritual. What makes something a ritual is really being able to open up um, and claim sacred space and play space is absolutely sacred space um, we see it with children they are in that and they it is it it encompasses everything they need they are being held in this creative spontaneous play so for us to be able to step in to play space as adults with the same rules of decency that are part of a child's play space. Play space is not reckless or destructive. True play space is creative and um, it just works out what needs to be worked out. And it gives us permission to try on different voices and roles and express what we otherwise couldn't. And that is a lot of fun. And it changes us. It changes our attitude. It changes the way our body feels. It, it changes um, everything. Like here, we're in the studio, right? So we're in the studio with our producer, Bobby, right. who has brought his 15-year-old dog into the studio to work with him every day. So Daisy came into the studio because she couldn't move anymore. And the, and the question was, you know, maybe it's time to put her down because she is suffering. But she enters into the studio. This studio is a play space. What we are doing is entering play space. This yes. this, this is whole, this whole experience of it originated doing a, in spontaneous uh, response from yes, you too. But, but being on a podcast that is unscripted, right. that has a certain heart that is very clearly grounded, allows us to play half of the things that come out of our mouth. We're like, wait, where did that come from? I didn't Whoa. know I thought that till right. just now. So here we are, and Daisy is in this play space, and we've seen her over the last week or two, and all of a sudden she's up and about, and we ask Bobby, like, Bobby, what is going on with Daisy? And he's like, yeah, she's going out for four walks a day. She follows me all over. She's up late while I'm working on shows. So she has been infused with this kind of life that she is spontaneously adapting to, and it's bringing back vitality. And that, I love Lori, that. I love that. is what we have been deadened into, whether it's COVID, whether it's 
all the issues that are coming to a head in our culture, our sense of vitality is really lost. And we're looking to get it back, whether it's through addiction or fighting right. or checking out. And we need to find other ways to come back to life, to tap I, into that. I absolutely am moved by what you're saying because I, I hadn't thought of like the vitality part of it, but it's exact, exact. Because what I was thinking is when we uh, do these spontaneous acts, that to me defines um, joy. Mm-hmm. Yes, but the thing is, it's joyful. also not result driven because we mess up all the time. Mm-hmm. I say stuff, and I hear later, and I'm like, "That's not the right word." But it just that's not how you say that. We came out. But, but there is a joy <laughs> in the expression where yes. it does not diminish the the heart of of what you're trying to express. The other thing is when you were talking about the play space and and um, rituals, right? Spontaneous uh, ritual. There's no but we model the concept. If, if it only began as a concept and you wanted to say, how do I make this real and experience it? Your model would be children for what yes. is spontaneous. And that is from within and pure virginal, I would even dare say, from the core, mm-hmm. from the core. You, you see them encounter some obstacle in play, the creativity and the joy when they do it, they're sa- and they're satisfied with the results. They're not, it's not about, I found a way to build this, to climb up to here, and it's not like, but what's the rest of the world doing? Right. It's only, I'm here now. That was it. And the other thing is, it's a very active experience. It's not a passive experience. Oh, no. It's and, embodied. And, so, and, and they don't fake playing Mm -mm. where you will never see a child sitting on the corner of the playground trying to key in a conversation to participate to mirror or to have the appearance of being alive being vital in that play the way to vitality in that is to be in that spontaneous moment and it becomes when they all are able to express this this spontaneity from the heart this just gift from what's within to to the play area it becomes combined and it's the most beautiful thing yes i, I agree. you can even see to hear the laughs even the boo-boos and oh then my gosh, and then and the their own little medics <laughs> over been, conflicts but, like whoa but they work it out they work it out yes the other thing that i will say about that is if you can't get to that space, it's okay. It is a work. A couple things. First of all, when it's time to work, my advice would be work your butt off so that you don't tap into spontaneity time because I left and I, I, here I go, me first. I left some clothes on the bed that I had folded and I wanted to hang up. Now, and then I got distracted and whatever. Now, what if there was some magic in a moment for when I return home and I have traded that time to put the clothes away so part of it does come from discipline even though spontaneous sounds like fly by the seat of your pants now you there is so work. much to be said about the discipline of the the musts in life and and just having a good respect for it and getting it out of the way so you're available when the magic shows up well and I think you really did a great job in clarifying that the spontaneity of the heart is it is not impulsivity and it's not recklessness right it is a very different gear that you're shifting into and it, it's it's difficult to put words to it well that impulse control right? my word is it's all about anxiety yes i would agree what I, are you scared I'm gonna, of i'll, I'll I be the first to say you. it because i live it and a little less now with years of heart work, but impulse control, it, it, it's just me crying out of my anxiety yes. on the spectrum. I could totally Thanks agree with that. <laughs> no, I think that is at the heart of, yeah, it that's is. cutting to the heart of it. Yeah, you're just which telling again, people, this is the ugly that. bit of me. And it's okay to do that too. Right. But then... But, but spontaneity does 
result in a, a, a joyous satisfaction. And I think that's what you were getting at also. Like, how do I know this was an act of spontaneity? Because it is new and appropriate. Like, it works for the situation. Mm -hmm. And there's joy in that because you are getting to be a creator. And the funny thing is it's not generally Mm -mm. self-serving. This is the, and we're not qualifying it. I won't ever qualify what rises from somebody's heart. And I know you won't. You're... I'm more likely than you, and if I won't, you will. <laughs> but I will say that when it, what does rise, like if I would need to disrupt a depressing week or a serious bout of depression or anxiety, I could try a whole lot of self, all kinds of things, okay? I could exhaust them. And a lot of times that's, we can confuse that exhaustion from uh, exhausting everything with um, a lack of energy for spontaneity. Mm -hmm. But in fact, our energy light in that spontaneity, and it's not gone. We put it off a little, but it's still available. So it's not gone. The other thing is like if I happen to be caught up in my feelings and depression, whatever, I've never been able to fully get a solid read on myself like this will I like I pick wrong all the time what will make me feel better (laughs) come I thought cake was now I feel this much after cake I thought this relationship would it soured Uh, terrible about picking the one thing that can rise is my hope and goodwill in a true way for somebody else, mm-hmm. and that can disrupt my depression. So if, uh, Marianne, I don't know where you were when we had even begun this, okay? Mm-hmm. But in a spontaneous moment, you responded, here we are. I don't know where you were, but I do know that that spontaneity was from within you, and it was you, and you get to experience that joy, but it you did not sign up for anything self-serving. This is not to say I'm not against uh, self-care. I just suck at it. So that's So I can't, I can't fault anybody who's got it down. Good for them. But I will say that th- that part of, if you insist on identifying when it happens, that is one really good way to know you can't go wrong. And that means really wish well for somebody. Not help them until things are going well and then resent it, but really wish well help all you can, or if you cannot, be honest so that you don't hinder them with like any type of false hopes or anything. Well, right. Absolutely. But it's really good for others that heals us. And that's the whole point of being spontaneous and putting that in the world. It's willing good for the world. And I don't know which way to pick because I can't even pick what's right for me, guys. So instead, I'm going to go into untapped, unadulterated space and just want it for you. That's a start. Mm -hmm. And the acts that Mm. rise in you, and they will follow. They come attached. And what you're talking about is a new and appropriate response to what we have been indoctrinated into in our culture, which is a very independent, individualistic success story and that is radically different to say maybe I don't worry how this is going to serve me and I just think about somebody else for a moment and act on it right and that is new unfortunately in our culture right and it's old and it's remembering the oldest of ways of I will tell you this. This is our one chance. I I don't ever like care for appropriating, and I'm not in this case, but it is the one opportunity we all get. You as Italian and and spiritually, how I offer you my family and Native Americans have adopted you and offered you their Mm -hmm. family and lineage. And in this one way, I, I won't apologize ever, no matter who corners me on it, we get to reach the indigenous of ourself. 
I would when agree. we get to the heart and bring that indigenous part of us, that's it's very honoring. There. It's so it's an honoring untapped. thing to say for the indigenous way, because because it we is, all do have that potential. It's the braiding of the sweet grass, right? Oh, which is the sweetest now you broke my heart a and sweet grass is what they've used for grieving. And the sweet grass braid is made up of three strands, like all braids, but each of the strands has seven pieces of the grass. And one is for the ancestral path, what came before. One is for the heart way, which is the qualities of love and respect, humility, kindness, and whatever other ones but along those lines. And then the third strand is for the future, for the children, for the generations to come, the next seven generations. And the weaving of those three elements. We work with this a lot, mind, body, heart. We work with this concept of this is not just one influx, past, present, future. It is this pulling together. It's the binding, which is what I call the re- really you, right? The, yes. The, the, in, a, in a true religious way, not a fad, not a, not a sect, but in this way, it's the binding of all as they should be. And we get this rare opportunity to show up late and dip into it. Yes. The moment it, you're ready. It's so interesting because we started talking about like the spontaneity and joy in our podcast or conversations of joy and grief. And they burn the sweet grass because when we grieve, our, uh, our ancestors grieve with us, all in our present clan grieve with us, and the future of our lineage also grieves with us. And so whether that's personal or within community or globally or in the whole universe, that concept of where we're not alone and we are interconnected. That's what I was thinking because spontaneity requires almost this sense of going within your own personhood and deeper to that... uh, it's a, it's a, it's it's actually the rising of a spirit is if you want to get technical it's um i can't think of the word it's you to something but it's it's the you you demon so people get this idea that demon is demon but it's d a i m o n or d a e originally yes. that's only a spirit but so when you have the Udemon, it's the spirit that's able to rise within you. Mm. And the fear that can be, I think, because of misguidance from the world, is that to go in and access that means we're letting go of something solid, and it can feel very alone. Mm. Okay? Mm. Way past being odd man out, we're talking about mm. I'm leaving the world to go to something that I sense is there. I've not... I don't even know that I've encountered mm-hmm. it, but it's having that faith. There, That's, you will be greeted, is what you're saying, and it makes me like goosebumps everywhere, Marianne. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me too of like the burning of the palms, right? And you see this over and over. Yes, yes. Uh, Very similar you, ritual. We've come to ritual. It's the funniest thing yeah. because how many people? invented the ash (laughs) nobody gets to claim it sorry but Mm -hmm. it's a very powerful symbol yes but it's been over and over so there's something to it and that's when you burn everything away that ash is that little bit like you know just the carbon that did not burn Mm -hmm. that it remains that's what remains when like all the nonsense is cast away very little but very potent because the other thing that doesn't burn, which I liken you to sometimes, is the spirit. And that's mm-hmm. when I say you're like a phoenix that rises from the ashes. Yes. That's it. Now we're just, I mean, but it, it's, this is, I'm, I'm moved. I'm like, I'm very I happy with this. I am always spontaneously moved <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> by, by the idea of just that, t- tapping into it's, it's unknown and feeling the permission and the trust to go there knowing that, you know, 
you've got backing from the heart. The right. heart will really back you. I'm so happy, too, that you, like we had done today, and I, I, I'm i wrapping it up now, but just to say that um, with all my heart, when I hurt, it's one thing, but and when I feel helpless, it's one thing, but I have my time with me to to experience it different there is no helplessness I feel in this world like seeing the helplessness of others I it I believe that is your spirit Lord. it is worse to me than my own pain and with all my heart today whatever we get right or wrong I've just been wanting so bad like can we just break away and I think this is part of like in in just that intention of really wanting it for others. I, here I am receiving so much because no, as I you think it, I think with it's it. absolutely because it's the truest because the alternative is to be nature. is to freeze in pain and to freeze in suffering to what freeze in fear. That's the worst. No response is the worst. Yeah, I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As you see kids, I'd rather see them tumble and tumble trying to work it out than the f- being frozen. Yeah. Because you've lost vitality when you freeze. You're, yeah, you're petrified. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, there we go. Woo. Trust it. Want to go eat? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> okay. Thank you for listening. This was a long one, but I'm it, actually... I maybe this was my little cry for help today, Marianne. Thank really? you, because uh, there's a lot to hold nowadays, and it's hard. It it's hard. It um, thank you for listening. Uh, you can like and share the podcast as well as Strong Island. We're here with Bobby and Daisy. Hi, Bobby. Hello. <laughs> Daisy adopted Bobby so we keep saying Daisy has a new pet and he spontaneously surrendered to that and it's worked out lovely we're seeing it here (laughs) but anyways please like and share um and you never know you share something you you could dislike seven you share one somebody may need that eighth let's Mm -hmm. or let's say six and seven so we stick with that nice seven I love it but anyways until next time please farewell